Imagine if you set a ball rolling at a certain velocity and it never stops and continues to roll at that velocity forever. But then we don't quite see that happening in everyday life. A rolling football, a sliding puck or a skater eventually comes to a stop. So let us try to understand what really is happening here and how Newton's first law of motion explains all this. So in real life, what happens is that there are external forces acting on the ball that tend to change its velocity, like the force of friction or the drag force of the air, which eventually slows down the ball. So let us do a small experiment here where we take a book and slide it on a table and we see that it goes a certain distance. But if say you sprinkle fine powder on the table and then slide the book, we know that it will go a longer distance. And if you could in some way create a layer of air over the table and then you try to slide the book on that air cushion, it will go a lot farther. So what you're doing is that you are reducing the external force that opposes the motion of the book which in this case is the force of friction that is reducing its velocity. And as you reduce this external force, you see the book is able to maintain its velocity a lot longer. And eventually, if you had some magic wand that could remove this friction totally, the book would have just slid across the table endlessly. And if you could also remove the force of gravity, which is also an external force, it would have simply gone into outer space and moved for infinite time at that velocity. So from these observations, we can conclude that a body moving with a certain velocity will keep moving at that velocity if no external force acts on it. And that leads us to Newton's first law of motion, which simply says that if no net force acts on a body, the body's velocity cannot change. In other words, if a body is moving, it continues to move with the same velocity, that is same magnitude and same direction. And this also includes a case of zero velocity, that is, if the body has zero velocity or is at rest, it will continue to be at rest if no net force acts on the body. Now, what is important to note is that the law says no net force. That means that either there is no force at all of any kind, or if there are multiple forces acting on the body, they should cancel each other to give zero force. And zero force therefore means zero acceleration. And zero acceleration means no change in velocity. So this is all what Newton's first law of motion has to say. But then we can make a lot of other conclusions from this simple law. For example, if we know that a body's velocity is constant, we can immediately say that the net force on it must be zero. So Newton's first law of motion applies to all situations involving force and motion, including something as simple as driving a car. And let us say your car is parked outside your house, then would you say that Newton's first law applies to the situation? Well, the answer is it will very much apply because when the car is parked, the velocity is zero and it will continue to be zero because all forces on the car are balanced, which means no net force or no acceleration. That means no change in velocity. The velocity was zero and continues to be zero in accordance with Newton's first law of motion. Now, sometime later, you hop into your car and your car starts moving at a constant velocity. Now, does Newton's first law apply in this case? So how we interpret the situation is that when the car is moving at a constant velocity down the road, the net force must also be zero according to Newton's first law. And what forces are acting on the car? The car's engine produces a forward force, while the friction 
that has the same magnitude as that of the force provided by the engine opposes the forward motion, thus producing a net force that is zero and therefore the car continues in its state of constant velocity. Once again, in accordance with Newton's first law of motion, until the net force becomes non-zero. And the moment the net force becomes non-zero, Newton's first law of motion indicates that the car will no longer be able to maintain its velocity. Another important aspect of Newton's first law of motion is the inertia of a body. This is a very simple idea which equates the inertia of a body with its mass. That is, more the mass, more the inertia. And how do we exactly define inertia? Well, inertia is defined as the ability of a body to resist the change of its state of motion. And let me explain this to you with an example. So, if you have an elephant running towards you, it is more difficult to stop it compared to a bull running towards you. And we say that the inertia of the elephant, which is proportional to its mass, is more than that of the bull that has a lower mass. Likewise, if both the elephant and the bull are stationary, it is again more difficult to move the elephant than the bull, which is again because the inertia of the elephant is more than that of the bull owing to its mass. So, if someone says that inertia of this body is very high, what you should understand is that it is very difficult to move the body from rest and once the body starts moving, it is equally difficult to stop it. And just so that you know, Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. So, this lesson has decoded the first of the Newton's three laws of motion. But for videos on Newton's second law and third law, you can head over to this playlist. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will be helpful. And see you in the next video.